So here's a different perspective on ROI that many of us uh, see as return on investment. And it really is more of a business type uh, word or phrase. But let's look at it from an education lens. And I want you all to think about this. We spend so much money in education on professional development, programs, technology. We spend time on new ideas and strategies. What is the resulting impact? So what I want you to think about this is as we flesh out this concept of return on instruction, when we spend money on technology, professional development, programs, when we spend time on ideas, strategies, new approaches, there needs to be a return on instruction that results in evidence of improved learning outcomes. That's what this new concept of ROI is. What is the evidence that our investments have paid off in terms of not just improving instruction, but instruction that improves learning for our kids? So as we think about how we ensure a return on instruction, there's four concrete areas that we can look at. And it really is a combination of both qualitative and quantitative means. First off, I get it, data. You know, but data can be a powerful element to show how our investments have actually improved learning outcomes for kids. And, you know, again, data is not the end all be all, but it does matter to our stakeholders. It does. And it is one element to look at. So when we look at when we're investing in technology per se, let's look at everything from uh, standardized achieve, uh, achievement scores, graduation rates, promotion rates. Uh, discipline record, uh, discipline referrals, you know, and see if there's a positive correlation. Same thing with professional development. Data tells you one part of the story, but how else can we ensure return on instruction? How about observations and evaluations? You know, are we actually getting in classrooms, having those conversations, whether they're evaluative or non-evaluative, to go in and see if there's changes to practice with the investments in technology and professional development and programs? We can also look at artifacts. You know, when, and again, I use technology as an example because we invest so much money in it or on it. Well, when we think about artifacts, okay, let's look at has level of questioning changed? Are we scaffolding? Uh, has student work changed? Has assessment changed? Has the way we give feedback changed? So looking at work, looking at assessments, unit plans, uh, lesson plans can tell us a lot as to, okay, are we starting to see those changes with the different elements that we've invested in? Another thing that we can look at, which would be number three, is portfolios. Portfolios combine the artifacts by showing growth over time, showing changes over time. So as we look at those four elements, whether it be data, observation, evaluation, walkthroughs, artifacts, or portfolios, you know, are we looking at clear evidence that investments in anything, whether it be technology, professional development, programs, or the time we spend on the latest innovative idea. You know, it might sound good in theory, but does it actually lead to improvements in practice? And, and that's what we want to think about, you know, especially when we think about this return on instruction, just because it sounds good on Twitter or looks good on Pinterest does not mean it's an effective practice. An effective practice uh, really leads to that concrete evidence, both qualitative and quantitative means, that there are improvement to outcomes for our kids. You know, are our kids learning? How are they applying their learning? How are they thinking? How are they applying their thinking? So we have to look at the uh, full gamut. So whether you're a teacher, uh, building administrator, uh, district leader, think about the next time or think about what you have in place now. Think about what you might want to put in place and start fleshing out a plan for how you're going to ensure that return on instruction.